Wow, we are going to learn so many cool things on this homeschool pop video. All right, what's the first thing we should learn? How about... Reptiles. This is amazing. This is awesome. You know, the world has many different types of animals. One of the most fascinating types are the reptiles, and you're about to see why. But first, let's meet some of these reptiles. Snakes, turtles, crocodiles, geckos, lizards, and chameleons. Now look at these incredible animals. They're all reptiles. What do they all have in common? We're about to find out what makes all these animals reptiles. First of all, they are covered with scales. Not with hair or feathers, but with scales. Look at this incredible iguana. Oh my goodness, covered in scales. I mean, just look at these scales. These scales are dry and they're waterproof. And they cover the bodies of reptiles just like this iguana. Reptiles aren't covered in fur, they're not covered in hair, they're not covered in feathers, they're covered in these waterproof scales. Look at this massive snake. You can see that the snake is covered with scales. Remember, snakes are reptiles, and reptiles are covered with scales. Look at all these scales, absolutely covered with these intricate scales. Here's an interesting example of scales. This is an albino alligator, which means the alligator is very pale. And you can see that this alligator is covered with scales, but the alligator also has these bony plates on his back. You can kind of see them there in the corner. Those are not scales, but reptiles also can have those bony plates, but this alligator is still covered with scales. Scales are a big clue that an animal is a reptile. The second thing you need to know about reptiles is reptiles breathe in oxygen. Just like we breathe in oxygen, reptiles have to breathe in oxygen to survive. Now, just like people, reptiles have two lungs in their body. Lungs bring in new air and pump out the old air. Even reptiles that live in and near water, like crocodiles and alligators, have to breathe in air to survive. Now this is so fascinating. Did you know reptiles are cold-blooded? Cold-blooded means that their bodies don't keep them warm automatically. They have to have sunlight to keep them warm. Here's a picture of a lizard that's soaking in some sunlight. This is very important for this lizard because, as with all the other reptiles, this lizard is cold-blooded. That means that the temperature of the lizard needs to have sunlight to keep it warm. It doesn't warm automatically. This lizard is cold-blooded. Here's a snake that's in the sunlight. The sunlight is helping to warm the body of this snake. This doesn't happen automatically with the snake's body because the snake is cold-blooded just like the other reptiles. Hey, here's a picture of a chameleon. Chameleons are just so cool. Now, of course, this chameleon is cold-blooded because all of the reptiles are cold-blooded. If they want to get warmer, they have to go to the sunlight because their bodies don't warm them. They're cold-blooded. Wow, I mean, right? I mean, these are incredible creatures. You know, reptiles, they're covered in these dry, waterproof scales. They breathe in oxygen with those two lungs like we do. They're cold-blooded, which is so fascinating. Can you imagine having to lay out in the sun if you wanted to warm your body instead of your body being able to do it on its own? These are fascinating creatures. Hey, d do you have a favorite reptile? 
It's okay, you don't have to tell me. But... Cool. Very cool. Yeah, it's, you know, you figure snakes, turtles, crocodiles, alligators, geckos, lizards, chameleons, I mean, reptiles are just the coolest, aren't they? I mean, they're just, they're just absolutely amazing. Oh, oh, this is such a heavy cart. Oh, my goodness. Oh, oh, it's hard work. You know, a lot of times learning can be hard work, too. But we hope that these videos are really helpful and make learning fun so that learning isn't hard like pushing this cart. Oh, my goodness. All right. Uh, what's the next thing we should learn about? Let's learn about... Sharks, uh huh? Sharks, this is a video so many of you have asked for. It's time. It's time for the shark video! Sharks are an amazing type of fish in the ocean. Isn't that interesting? Sharks are fish. Sharks are amazing fish. Now, the picture most of us have in our minds when we think of sharks isn't always the case. You see, there are 440 types of sharks, and they can be quite different from one another. For example, the whale shark is the largest type of shark. It gets over 40 feet long. Wow! But the dwarf lantern shark is the smallest shark. It is only about six inches and can fit in your hand. You know? Wow, this is not what most people picture when they picture a shark. But the dwarf lantern shark is just as much a shark as the whale shark is. Remember, there are 440 types of sharks, so they don't all look like this guy, you know? Here's the thing, even though there are so many different types of sharks, all sharks have certain things in common. For example, sharks don't have any bones. The skeleton of a shark is made of cartilage. That goes for all sharks. Sharks don't have bones. And it's interesting because most other fish do have bones, but sharks don't. Okay, so the skeleton of a shark is made of cartilage, but what is cartilage? What does that mean? What is cartilage? Okay, this is going to sound weird, but touch your ears and move them around with your fingers. That rubbery material in your ear is called cartilage. Isn't that amazing? There's some cartilage in your body, just like there's cartilage in the body of a shark. The skeleton of a shark is made of cartilage, which makes a shark very flexible, kind of like your ears, right? Your ears were kind of rubbery and flexible when you touched them. That's the way the skeleton of a shark is, which helps a shark move around in special ways. It makes a shark very flexible. Hey, you want to know what's not flexible? Shark's teeth! Uh-huh! Shark's teeth! This is interesting. A shark uses its teeth to bite, but not to chew. Whatever they bite that goes into their mouths, sharks swallow whole. We use our teeth not just to bite, but to chew. But a shark only uses its teeth to bite. And a shark can have a lot of teeth in its lifetime. Now here's the crazy part. A shark may have as many as 20,000 teeth during its life. There are rows of replacement teeth that in case a tooth gets broken or falls off and gets lost, a new tooth emerges. Now, we've already mentioned there are 440 types of sharks. In fact, you're probably sick of hearing the fact that there are 440 types of sharks. How many types of sharks are there? How many? 
four okay, four hundred and forty. Alright, we're gonna just show you four of our favorites. There are a lot of other cool sharks. We're missing a lot of them. We're gonna show you four sharks right now so that if you see these sharks in the future you'll be like, oh, I know what type of shark that is. The first shark is the whale shark, and we've already talked about how the whale shark is the largest shark in the world. Yeah, but what's cool about whale sharks, they have these white spots, and they're very gentle. So even though they're huge, they're very gentle. In fact, some whale sharks have even let divers sit on top of them. How would you like to ride a whale shark? What? Next, we're going to show you the great white shark, perhaps the most famous shark of them all. This is the shark that most people think of when they think of sharks, and the great white shark is really intense, 23 feet long, and they eat all kinds of things, dolphins, sea lions, whales, seals, and even other sharks. Next is the hammerhead shark, which gets its name because its head looks like a hammer, which it kind of sounds like a mean name, like, you know, some of the other sharks were like, hey, hammerhead, and he was like, hey, you know, don't call me that, but, you know, the name kind of stuck. The hammerhead shark, it's interesting, that's actually an advantage for the hammerhead shark. It helps with the swimming and also helps with the eyesight. The eyesight of the hammerhead shark is much better better, especially at gauging distance, than other sharks. Finally, there's the Thresher Shark. The Thresher Shark is a very strong shark known for its very, very long tail. And that tail can be huge. In fact, the tail of a Thresher Shark can weigh as many as 300 pounds or more. Wow, the Thresher Shark. Those are just four amazing types of sharks. We left out so many. But just understand, sharks are incredible creatures. And as humans, we need sharks. A lot of people don't realize how much we need sharks. You see, sharks have an important job, a very important job, and it's not babysitting fish because, Fred, I don't trust you with Henry. I really don't. I really don't think that you can be trusted with Henry because I think what we're looking at here is a snack time, all right? And uh, you're, you're just not the best babysitter, okay? I don't really trust that Henry's going to make it through, okay? So what is a shark's important job? What do sharks do? Here's their job. Sharks balance the ocean ecosystem. The ocean just wouldn't run as well without sharks. And there are a lot of ways that sharks balance the ocean ecosystem. But we're going to give you one specific way just so you can see how important sharks are. So here is our example. Sharks feed on herbivores that eat coral reef. And you might say, well, how does that impact us? How is that important? Well, in places where there aren't enough sharks, coral reef has been wiped out and it's replaced with this gross, nasty algae. It's not just coral reef that gets affected. All different types of creatures in the ocean would be affected by that. The balance is held together by these amazing fish called sharks with a skeleton made of cartilage that work hard to balance the ocean. Even though they don't realize what they're doing, they're helping maintain the diversity and the beauty of the ocean. Now here's the sad part. 100 million sharks are killed every year by people. Think about that. 100 million sharks are killed every year by people. Thankfully, there are organizations that are working to protect sharks. We need sharks. Sharks aren't bad. They're not mean. They're not evil. They balance the ocean ecosystem. They have a very important job, and they need to be left alone, and they need to be protected. One final note before we leave. 
You know, a lot of people misunderstand sharks and think that sharks are mean. But sharks don't like biting people. When a shark bites someone, it is because they think that that person is a sea creature. In other words, sharks like to leave us alone and they want to be left alone. We can protect them. You know, they have an important job to do. And let's be honest, they're super cool. We appreciate you watching our video on sharks and we hope to see you next video. Here's our friend Fred. We heard that he just took up the harp. He just started playing the harp. Fred, we can't, we can't hear you. We're having audio problems with Fred right now. Fred, you look so happy playing. We, we can't hear you, okay? You got, you got to wear your mic or something. We can't hear the music. Oh, he doesn't even know. He doesn't even, isn't that nice? You know, Fred is just plucking away. He's having a good time. You know, kind of like we're having a good time right now with these learning videos. And next, we are going to learn about giraffes it's gonna be so cool it's gonna be so awesome giraffes are such amazing animals okay so what are giraffes well giraffes are tall mammals that are from africa here's a mommy giraffe and a baby giraffe in africa how cute a little giraffe family giraffes are tall mammals that are from africa and when we say tall, we mean tall. In fact, giraffes are the tallest animals in the world. So if anyone ever asks you, what is the tallest animal in the world? Say giraffes. In fact, male giraffes can be as tall as 18 feet. And female giraffes can get as tall as 14 feet. Such tall animals. Oh my goodness. So much of that height comes from their long necks, and giraffes are famous for their necks. You know, this giraffe is literally sticking his neck out there and being like, hey, what's going on? Hey, you're learning about us right now? Homeschool pop? Huh? Huh? Yeah, I can see. Yeah, I got a long neck. Uh-huh. I'm watching you right now. Uh-huh. What's going on? What's going on? You know? Hmm. Earlier, we mentioned that giraffes are from the continent of Africa. Where is the continent of Africa? Do you know? Uh-huh. Right here is the continent of Africa. That's where giraffes are from. Africa is the only continent where giraffes live in the wild. Speaking of the wild, how many giraffes live in the wild? That's a good question. Do you have a guess? How many giraffes live in the wild? Hmm. Well, about 97,000 giraffes live in the wild. That might sound like a lot, but the number of giraffes living in the wild has been going down, which is why it's so great that there are laws that protect giraffes. It is illegal to hunt giraffes. In addition to the giraffes that live in the wild, about 1,100 giraffes live in captivity. That means they live in a place where they are held and kept by people, places like the zoo. Have you ever seen a giraffe at the zoo before? Thanks for sharing. Wow, do you see how long this giraffe's tongue is? The tongue of a giraffe can be as long as 20 inches, which is perfect for grabbing food out of tall trees. Speaking of what giraffes eat, giraffes are herbivores. What is a herbivore? Uh-huh, herbivores are animals that just eat plants. Giraffes are herbivores. They only eat plants. They don't eat other animals. Like the babies of all of the other mammals, baby giraffes drink milk. Baby giraffes are called calves. Calves don't eat plants until they are about three weeks old. Oh, 
little calf drinking your milk. And when you're three weeks old, then you can eat plants. But now you just drink the milk. Oh, this is awkward. Um, Mr. Whiskers, I'm so, I'm sorry. I know I normally talk to you that way. You know, that's that's the voice I use with you. But I talk to baby giraffes called calves that way too. Um, but yeah, this this it's weird. I yeah. Let's just let's just move on. Let's let's just move on. Okay. Now is the time for our final giraffe fact. And hey, this giraffe doesn't have to look that excited. I mean, this has been a fun video. You don't have to be happy that this is our final fact, okay? And why are you wearing a t-shirt? So here it is. Most giraffes only need about 30 minutes of sleep a day to survive. That's it. Wow. Giraffes can sleep sitting on the ground, or they can sleep standing up. In the wild, they usually sleep standing up just in case there's a predator that's trying to get them. They could wake up and go ahead and try to make a getaway. But even as they sleep, oftentimes they'll have one eye open just to be careful. This is nice. A giraffe family. I mean, Junior has way too much energy. Do you remember what baby giraffes are called? Uh-huh. Calves. Uh-huh. So this calf, you know, just has, has a lot of energy, but oh, how much fun learning about the tallest animals in the world, giraffes. Oh, so great. We hope you had a great time. You'll share these facts with others. Okay, Junior, you can stop jumping now. And... Uh, these parents aren't going to step in, are they? You can stop jump. All right. All right. D keep jumping. Jump all day. Jump all day. See what happens. Okay? My goodness. Giraffes. Giraffes. You're doing great. You're increasing your skills just like this racer, you know, racing on the water. You're increasing your skills. You're doing a wonderful job. And next, we are going to learn about... Horses, that's gonna be so cool! Most recently, six year old Scarlett asked for a horses video, but others have asked as well. And it's time! It's time because horses are so cool. You're gonna learn some amazing facts about horses, and it's just gonna be awesome. Horses are large, domesticated mammals that are incredibly strong and smart. Do you know what the word domesticated means? It's a good question. What does the word domesticated mean? Domesticated means to be kept as a pet or on a farm. Now that doesn't mean that all horses are domesticated, but in general, horses are domesticated mammals. While horses in general have been domesticated, there are some horses that live in the wild. Horses that live in the wild are called feral horses. So where do horses live? That's a great question. Where can you find horses? It's incredible. Horses live all over the world. Yeah, all over the world you can find horses. Horses, except places like, you know, Antarctica. You know, that's where the penguins live. Oh, little penguins, cute and small. You're not very big at all. At least compared to horses, right? <laughs> Look at these little guys. So horses pretty much live all over the world. And this is incredible. There are about 60 million horses in the world, <laughs> okay? About 60 million horses in the world. Hey, just as a fun thing, sometime today, ask somebody, say, how many horses do you think there are in the world? And they're going to be like, I don't know, nobody knows that. And you'll say, hey, about 60 million horses. 60 million. Take that fact with you, put it in your pocket, you're going to love it. Now you have to check this out, it's so fascinating. Baby horses are called foals. Isn't that interesting? 
Baby horses are called foals. Foals are fascinating. Did you know they can stand shortly after birth and can even run just two hours after birth? Two hours after they're born, they can literally run. Now, it's a very wobbly run, but they can run shortly after being born. It's absolutely incredible. A young female horse is a filly. Yeah, isn't that a neat name? A young female horse is a filly. A young male horse is a colt. Yeah, they're called colts. After its first year, a horse is called a yearling. You know, that makes sense. After a horse has been around for a year, you call the horse a yearling. Once a horse is two years old, that horse no longer is considered a yearling. After a horse passes that two-year mark, that horse is still considered either a colt or a filly. And then, once a filly is older than four, she is called a mare. And once a colt is older than four, he is called a stallion. Let's summarize this with a simple chart. Ooh, the color gray, how fancy. So a young male horse, a colt, grows up to be a stallion, a grown-up male horse. A filly, a young female horse, grows up to be a mare, a grown-up female horse. With all of this growing, horses must eat a lot of food. Food must be really important to them. And food is, food is, but they might not eat the things that you might think they eat. Horses are herbivores. The word herbivore means an animal that eats plants. Horses are herbivores. Horses eat plants, though they can be trained to eat meat, and if they're in a circumstance where they have to eat meat for survival, they will, or if they're given meat over a regular period of time, they could be like, oh, this is food too, but they are herbivores. They are animals that naturally eat plants. They love plants. They could be so healthy and so strong without ever having to eat meat. Next, we want to talk about horse eyes. Yeah, this is a big eyeball of a horse. Their eyes are absolutely amazing. Of course, your eyes have to be uncovered for you to see. Oh, somebody get a somebody get a comb. The, the, the horse can't. The eyes are covered. The eyes are covered. This is like the worst picture for us to show. When we're talking about the eyes, we can't even see the eyes of this horse. A horse's eyes are amazing. They can see in just about every single direction except directly behind them and interestingly enough, directly in front of them. Which, if that doesn't sound impressive, it definitely should because they can literally see every single direction other than those. I mean, they can see just about everything. Their eyes are amazing. But seriously, kids, do not stand directly behind a horse. That is totally serious because the horse can't see there. And if that horse hears a sound that you make, that horse could actually kick you and hurt you. And the horse doesn't want to hurt you. So please do not stand directly behind a horse ever. Okay? Because horses are so strong. You could see all the muscles on this horse. This horse is so strong. That's why horses have been used for thousands and thousands of years to pull heavy things, including carriages with people in it, all kinds of heavy things. Horses are so strong and powerful. And this horse is just literally taking a nap, lying down and just sleeping because horses can fall asleep lying down or standing up. In fact, I bet this horse is napping. Ah, that's what it, I bet. I bet this horse is napping. You're napping through our video. Hey, did you know? 
ponies are smaller types of horses. You may have been watching this video and thought, when are they going to bring up the ponies, right? I love the ponies. Even though a pony's body is a little different as far as size goes, a pony is very, very similar to any other horse, being incredibly strong and incredibly smart. Which brings us to our final fact. Horses are incredibly smart. They're incredibly smart. Horses are able to communicate with each other through sounds and facial expressions. And horses have amazing problem solving skills that can get them out of all kinds of jams. And sometimes it can get them in trouble too. What amazing animals horses are. Hey, Petey. I know, I know, I heard about your plane. You know, it's a cool plane, you know, and, and it's, it's neat. I, I don't know if it flies or you, you look pretty confident that it's going to fly, which is cool. Yeah, I, I see you. Hello. Hello. Yeah, thanks for waving. Thanks for saying hello. You know, we're actually in the middle of learning. We're, we're in the middle of learning a lot of new cool things right now. So I actually do have to go. Hi, you're still waving. Okay. Um, we're going to go uh, because now we need to learn about penguins. And this is a video idea from Micah, who's six years old from Maynardville, Tennessee. So thank you, Micah. Penguins are birds. They are known for their black and white feathers. Look at them hanging out in this cold climate. They're having a great time. Really social birds. They're just chilling. They're hanging out. They're penguins. They're birds with black and white feathers. Now, in addition to their black and white feathers, penguins are also known for how they waddle. Isn't it funny? The way penguins waddle is fascinating. Do you know how to do that? If you're able to, could you waddle right now? Yeah, just stand up. Yeah, and waddle. <laughs> just from this side to this side. It's a funny way that they walk, but that's how they walk. Penguins waddle. Now you might be wondering, oh man, why are they waddling? Don't they fly? Well, it's interesting because Penguins are not able to fly. They're one of those types of birds that don't fly. They do have a special skill that kind of looks like flying that we're about to show you. Okay, so what is this special skill that kind of looks like flying? It's actually swimming. Penguins flap their wings when they swim just like other birds flap their wings to fly. And you can see in this picture, they lift up their wings, then they flap down their wings, and this helps them swim. It's amazing, isn't it? It's amazing. I mean, penguins are great swimmers. In fact, penguins can spend as much as 75% of their time in the water. Some penguins spend more time in the water than above ground on the surface. All right, here's where we need your help. Yeah, your help. Why do you think they spend so much time in the water? We have a hint here. Think about their food. What food do you think penguins enjoy eating? Another hint, it'd be in the water. What in the water do penguins like to eat? Yeah, penguins mostly eat fish. They love going in the water, eating those fish. There's other seafood that they enjoy too, but they love their fish and they love swimming around and hunting for them. Now, okay, here's something you already know. We all know this. Baby penguins are just the cutest ever. I know, and it's just something we all have to deal with in life. A whole nother level of cuteness. But yeah, we've got to talk about these penguin babies because absolutely cute beyond all measure. Now, like other baby birds, baby penguins hatch from eggs, and most penguins hatch two eggs at a time. You can see in this picture, there's an egg in front of this penguin, there's an egg underneath, and you 
look real close so you can see that second egg, they usually have two eggs. Now, only Emperor and King Penguins hatch just one egg, but those are the largest penguins out there, so I guess it's just their size. They're not able to have two at a time, but most penguins have two baby birds at a time. And they hatch, and the cuteness has arrived. And here's an emperor penguin couple with a little baby penguin. Remember, emperor and king penguins just have one baby at a time. And then the smaller penguin breeds have two babies. And here is a chin strap penguin with two baby penguins. Now you might not realize this, there are 20 types of penguins, a lot of types of penguins. We're just going to share four with you. The largest are the Emperor and King penguins, and you can see them here in these pictures. The Emperor penguins are the biggest, right? And the King ones are pretty big too, not as big as the Emperor penguins, but still pretty big. Now you can tell it's a King because it looks like it has orange ears. And it's more yellow with the emperor penguins. You can also tell if it's a king penguin because it's just a little smaller. Now two smaller penguins are the chin strap and African penguins. Now the chin strap penguins look like they have a chin strap on. That's where their name comes from. And these African penguins, this picture was actually taken in South Africa and they've got black feet and they're just strictly black and white. And those are pretty small penguins. When they have babies, they have two babies at a time. That's true of the chin strap and of the African and they're just really cute. They're little smaller penguins. It's pretty cool. Penguins, right? Wow, black and white feathered birds that swim really well and they waddle and they eat lots of fish and they look really cute. Wow, fish. I could, oh man, I could, I could get some fish right now. That sounds, that sounds good. <laughs> I think I'm going to get some fish just like a penguin. You have been doing a great job, just like Mike, who's doing these push-ups. You know, he knows it's important to stay fit and to exercise and to stay healthy. And you're, like, exercising your mind right now, which is super cool. And next, we are going to learn about... Bats! Bats are so awesome, they are so cool, and you are about to find out why. The first fact we are going to learn about bats is that bats are mammals that fly! Yes, they are the only mammals that are capable of really, truly flying! They've got these wings! And they can maneuver so well. In fact, bats can maneuver in the air better than many birds can. And there are so many different types of these fascinating mammals around the world. In fact, there are over 1,200 species of bats in the world over 1,200 species. That means you could learn about a new type of bat every single day and it would take you over three years to learn all of the different types of bats. For example, these two bats are fruit bats or flying foxes. They're called flying foxes because their faces remind people of foxes. They're almost like foxes that are flying in the air. And this is a very interesting type of bat. In fact, these bats can be as large as four pounds. Fruit bats, or another nickname of these bats are flying foxes, can get really huge. In fact, they are the biggest bats in the world. Then on the other side of the spectrum, Kitty's hog-nosed bats are the smallest bats in the world. They only get to be about 2 grams, and you can see the size of the bat compared to this person's fingers. Wow, what a tiny bat! They are so small, they are actually nicknamed bumblebee bats because they are about the size of a large bumblebee. 
In fact, it is believed that these bats may be the smallest mammals in the world. The smallest mammals in the world. So bats can come in all different sizes, right? Oh my goodness, <laughs> what are you looking at, flying fox fruit bat? You're so huge! You might get up to me four pounds! You know, you're a big bat! <laughs> and you do look like a fox! That's really weird and really cool all at the same time, you know? Bats are pretty cool! You know, this is a fruit bat or a flying fox, you know? Whichever, you know, term you want to use. Just like bats can vary in size, they can also vary in what they eat. You know, some bats eat some things, other bats eat other things. You see, many bats eat fruit like these guys, you know? They're like, whoa, we're eating fruit! You know, why are you taking our picture? You know, they are having a great time eating this fruit. Many bats eat fruit. Other bats eat insects. Some bats eat fruit and insects. They're like, hey, we like to eat bugs and fruit. You know, they're all different types of diets that bats have. And some bats just drink blood. What? What? It's true, they're called vampire bats, and there are three different types of vampire bats. They live in Central and South America, so those are the only places in the world where you find vampire bats, and they usually bite other animals. They don't usually bite humans, so you don't have to be afraid of these, but they are fascinating, and it's true that they live on blood. So there are so many different types of bats in the world. Over 1,200 different types of bats. They come in different sizes. They eat different things. But now we're going to look at a bat joke. It seems like time for a bat joke, especially after talking about the vampire bats, okay? Okay, here's the joke. Why do bats love going to school? Why do bats love going to school? Because that's where they learn the alphabet. <laughs> oh my goodness. Get an alphabet instead of alphabet. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. It's pretty good. You know, pretty good joke. You know, your friends will like it. Share it with them. They'll laugh. They'll laugh. So we have talked about how there are tons of bats, over 1,200 different types of bats, and most bats are harmless. They're not going to hurt you. They're not actually that scary. A lot of people are afraid of bats. In fact, bats are a symbol of the holiday Halloween. Some of the reasons why people are afraid of bats is that they are nocturnal. That means they are up at night and they sleep during the day, which kind of makes them sketchy, a little bit scary. A lot of people think they are dangerous, so they're flying around and they think that these flying mammals are really dangerous, but the vast majority of bats are not dangerous. In fact, even of the vampire bats, the ones that carry sickness are less than 1% of the vampire bats, which the vampire bats are just three of over 1,200 kinds of bats. Overall, bats are harmless creatures that do fly, they are awake at night, but they're friendly, they're just doing their own thing. By the way, the reason that bats like to fly away when people show up is because a lot of times bats are more afraid of us than we are of them. They just like to be alone, to be with their families, and to do what they want to do, you know? So sometimes in caves, when people come in, you know, the bats fly out because the bats are like, Hey, we don't know about these human beings. <laughs> So bats are pretty cool, they're fascinating creatures, and they're not actually that scary.
wow, mommy, you're doing such a great job in your race. I had no idea you were an athlete, okay? I mean, with all that cloth wrapped around you, you're doing great. You're doing a great job, just like these kids are doing a great job learning. In fact, how about this? The next thing we're going to learn about is... Dolphins. So many of you have wanted a Dolphins video. Here it is. It's Dolphin time. Strap in for fun and adventure. We're going to learn about Dolphins. The first thing we want to learn about Dolphins is that Dolphins are mammals that spend their lives in the water. A lot of times when people think of mammals, they think of land animals. But Dolphins are mammals even though they spend their lives in the water. Mammals that spend part or all of their lives in the water are called aquatic mammals. Dolphins are aquatic mammals. Dolphins are mammals. And here are just three of the reasons why we consider dolphins mammals. The first reason we're going to share is that they breathe air. It's true, they breathe air. Fish breathe through gills, but dolphins have to come to the surface to breathe air, and they use their lungs to breathe air, just like we do. Also, mothers produce milk for their young. Fish don't do that. That's something mammals do. So dolphins are definitely mammals because their mothers produce milk for their young. Dolphins are also warm-blooded, like other mammals, and they're not cold-blooded like fish are. When you're warm-blooded, that means that your body maintains a fairly constant body temperature above your surroundings. Instead of having the same temperature as the outside world, you have a constant body temperature. There are more reasons too, like the fact that dolphins give live birth to their young. They don't lay eggs like fish do, they give live birth just like human beings do and other mammals do. Aww, dolphin family! So dolphins are aquatic mammals, that's pretty awesome. Just like other mammals, dolphins need water, but they can't drink the water around them because they're usually in salt water, right? So they get all the water they need from the fish they eat. They love eating fish. Do you like eating fish? Yeah, fish is pretty tasty, you know? We gotta eat like dolphins, right? This is interesting. A group of dolphins is called a pod or a school. Do you recognize that term school? Uh-huh, that's what a group of fish is called. Mm-hmm. So you could call a group of dolphins a pod or a school. Now this is fascinating. You could really impress a lot of people by sharing this fact with them. Did you know male dolphins are called bulls? Uh-huh, they're called bulls. Wow, wow. <laughs> and I wouldn't think they would be called a bull, but they are. Male dolphins are called bulls. It gets even more strange. You see, female dolphins are called cows. Uh-huh. <laughs> Not all cows say moo, you know. Female dolphins are called cows. And young dolphins are called calves. You might say, why? What's the reason? <laughs> we don't know. We don't know. We, we don't, we're not in charge of this stuff. We just share the knowledge with you, okay? Something you might not realize about dolphins is just how smart they are. Sometimes we've seen footage of how they learn tricks very quickly. They do learn things very quickly, but they can even mimic speech patterns. They are incredibly smart. Their brains are huge for the size of their bodies, and they just have a lot going on. They're really, really, really smart. Dolphins are not only smart, they're also incredibly sweet, and they're capable of empathizing with other creatures. To empathize means to understand and share the feelings of someone else. Dolphins are not only smart, they're not only caring, but they're also so cute! I mean, dolphins are just amazing, aren't they? 
hey, whoa, okay, first of all, elephants don't drive, okay? Elephants can't get a driver's license, and he's driving on the grass! He's driving on the grass! You're gonna ruin the lawn, okay? What's going on here? Alright, this is out of hand. Okay, <sighs> elephant, I don't want to tell you what you can do and what you can't do, but you can't drive, alright? Oh, my goodness. All right. Next, we are going to learn about foxes. And again, thank you, Micah, for suggesting this video. Foxes are awesome. There's a lot of cool things to learn about them. Foxes are mammals that have triangular ears. That means their ears look like triangles, a pointed nose, whiskers, and a bushy tail. Amazing looking creatures. Now, we're going to need your help right off the bat here. What do you think? Does the fox belong to the same family as dogs or cats? Go ahead and look at this fox in this picture and make a guess. Does the fox belong to the same family as dogs or cats? What do you think? Go ahead and guess. All right, let's see if you're right. Let's see. The fox is actually part of the same mammal family as dogs. Yes! Foxes are in the dog family. It can be a little bit confusing because foxes look so much like cats. They have whiskers like cats. Their slender bodies are like cats. Their eyes are like cats. They got the tail that's kind of like cats. Their ears are kind of like cats. Very, very similar to cats, but they are actually part of the dog family. So when you think, oh, a fox, a fox is part of the dog family. Aw, family. Here's two family members just taking, taking a break. The dog is about to sleep, and here's a fox. It's just catching a nap. They, they probably don't know their family, but they are. They're like long-lost family. They're all part of the same family, the dog family, and it's special. And They don't know it. They don't know it. If you ask a fox, hey, do you know you're a dog? Do you know you're part of the dog family? fox doesn't know. But maybe deep down, deep down in their hearts when they take naps, they might dream. They might dream and they might dream we're part of the same family. Aww. Okay, back to the foxes. It's interesting. Foxes are just a little smaller than a medium-sized dog. They're not too big, but they're not too small. They're like medium-sized animals, a little smaller than a medium-sized dog. It's pretty cool. A male fox is called a dog. Huh, it makes sense. They're part of the dog family. A male fox is called a dog. But a female fox is called a vixen. So a male fox is a dog, and a female fox is called a vixen. Yeah, we know what you're thinking. <laughs> what about the babies, right? What about the babies? Well, baby foxes are called pups. Kind of like baby dogs are called puppies. Baby foxes are called pups. Here are some gray fox pups. I know, super cute, super cute gray fox pups. All these pups, incredibly, incredibly cute. Did you know foxes can hear so well? They've got like superhero hearing skills. But how well can foxes hear? Well, foxes have incredible hearing. They can hear a watch tick from 40 yards away. Oh my goodness, 40 yards away. Think about how amazing that is. When a watch ticks, it's very soft. From 40 yards away, a fox can hear that. Oh my goodness. So if there's a fox anywhere nearby, they can hear you. Whoa, whoa, they're amazing creatures, but where are they found? Where do foxes live? Well, it's cool. Foxes are found all over the world. They can live in any ecosystem, even in deserts, even in the Arctic. Foxes are found all over the world. There are 37 types, but
but some of those have gone extinct, but there are still tons of types, and they're all over the world. They are also social creatures and have packs just like dogs, but unlike a lot of other dogs, foxes hunt alone. Here's a fox hunting all alone in the snow, and they are great, great hunters. Foxes are amazing hunters. In fact, foxes are known for being very smart and tricky. And they're not always the hunters. They are often hunted, but are good at avoiding capture. Foxes are featured in many stories and books as tricksters. And sometimes the fox is a symbol of being tricky, of being a trickster. Here's a picture from an old book where the character has the face of a fox, which is a symbol that this character is very tricky, is a very tricky character. It's interesting. Can you think of a story that has a tricky fox in it? There are a lot of them out there. Foxes are medium-sized mammals in the dog family that are found all over the world and are known for being smart and tricky. Wow, you completed the video. That is so impressive. Well, you might notice there's a circle right here on this video page that you can click to subscribe to our channel or you can click this rectangle to go to another one of our videos. But keep learning. Learning is so cool.